How are you lads? Welcome in to week one of Pick the Lock, right? I'm here with Shane Stapleton and Michael Verney. My name is Nisha Waldron. And like the t-shirt says, boys, it's rodeo time. We are going to pick a bet each week that's going to be our lock of the week, all right? I had one in mind myself. The idea is that above all everything else that's happening in the sport weekend, that if you were a fiver, a fiver to your name that you would have put the fiver on, this is what you'd pick, all right? I actually had to change mine there in the last 24 hours because uh, I was going to pick my Green Bay Packers against the Kansas City Chiefs at the weekend, but Aaron Rodgers got the COVID, so he's out, he's out, he's out. So that is no longer my uh, lock, unfortunately. So I'm going to change mine, but we're going to be talking about hurling matches, Gaelic football, soccer, horse racing, the NFL, and then whatever comments come in, whatever you can think of as well, boys and girls at home watching, right? Uh, what it's going to do then, we're going to keep track. So I'll have a track record, Bernie will have a track record, and Staple there will have a track record. And then the viewers, judge on the comments, we'll put up a poll on Twitter, and ye have to vote for what, out of four, what ye want to pick. And the poll will be on Twitter for 24 hours, and that's what you're going with. Like it or lump it, and then we'll keep track who's going to win at the end of this, maybe, what are we going to do, 10 to 12 weeks of it? Well, I think up till Christmas anyway, we'll see how we get on. We'll have that running scoreboard. Ideal, ideal, up till Christmas. There's uh, no hiding so... places here, lads. There's no hiding no. places here. Nick is on the chopping block here. Yeah, no, and like, you go. people might say, oh, look, sure, I'll pick something here where, you know, let's say somebody is massively fancy to win this weekend, where I'm just looking through some of the odds here. So, I don't know, there's, there's probably things that are like 10 to 1 somewhere. You can't just pick that team that's 10 to 1 on to win. Because you know, everyone knows that team's going to win. So if there's a, like in hurling, for example, if the handicap is less than six points, you can pick that team to win only. But let's say a team is, has a handicap of, you know, plus seven. You, you have to pick them on the handicap. Six, six, a handicap of six or more. In Gaelic football, the cutoff point is four. Uh, in soccer, the spread is one. So other sports we'll look at a little bit more as we go along. We'll also be working in horse racing. As long as it's fairly decent odds, you can't go for any massive odds on winner here. That's just a little bit too easy. So uh, I think we have a fair old idea of how this is going to go, Alicia. Yeah, and we're looking for people to hang onions here now, right? I have an onion hanger as well. So like, I, I'm going to be down with uh, TG Carr, blowing the Marble City at the weekend uh, for the Kenny County final. And, uh, you know, look, people might say, oh, you have to lock Bally Hill. Look, that's up to you. I'm not going to lock Bally Hill, uh, not the Shamrocks. I have another one. I have another one in store. So what will we talk about first? What will we go with first, boys? Well, I'd say you, you probably are going to have to talk about Shamrocks against um, against O'Loughlin Gale. So O'Loughlin what are the odds yeah. there? Isn't the spread something like four? Four, yeah. So this is the thing. The Shamrocks actually fall within the remit of picking them straight up to win. right? So because they're only minus four, which I was actually surprised at. Uh, and judging just from seeing them during the year and all, and even watching a lot in the semi final against Tullerone, uh, I actually was surprised at the four. So, handicap itself could be even a bit there. Like, if you were, I think the handicap, uh, I think, I think Ballyhale will be winning by more than four at half time, let alone full time. It, so, it, it, before they throw in the ball, even I don't know. I think, though, they'll, like it, I think it, they'll start quick. I think they'll start quick. I think this game could be, could be without a, or outside of a Lachlan's reach by half time, genuinely. And they might just keep them at arm's length then for the rest of the game. But there's, I don't, I, I wouldn't be putting anyone off that now. No, but in no, terms no, of no. like, like so, there's no need to go for the for the handicap there. So I'd say, like this, we could end up all picking the same bet here. They're they're looking pretty sweet for a lock of the week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But again, um, where are your onions? It's the truth, yeah. Boris Kilcotton are actually minus one against Clock Balakala, who are the county champions. So I would have actually thought that Clock Balakala would be the favourites here. So picking them on plus one, can we do that? Oh, well, you can. Yeah, you can. That's Remember, because so yeah. if it's an underdog, you can lock in the underdog to get there, uh, to cover their spread, basically. So, right, to cover so their if, handicap. if it was a draw, you'd win that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because you're locking in their handicap price. So, say for example, right, a uh, good friend of mine there, Aiden Hart, uh, former teammate of mine there with Gort, you might be looking at them to cover against Thomas's. Could they co cause some kind of an upset? Who knows? But you might like to lock in the spread, because. Uh, Look at it. It's an outside bet, but I'm not Nisha, come here. Look, what, one second. Well, how many how many clubs have you had? Go no, on. no, I heard I heard I heard with Hart in uh, UCC. I was wondering. Uh, he was 
Yeah, in, in Freshers. He was a uh, fresher teammate, Graham Mulcahy as well. There's a few of us. A good, a good, well, actually, there's 15 or 16 or more. 40, 40 fits from Clare as well, another one. Uh, there was an awful crowd of lads ended up playing inter-county hurling. But we got bet. We were robbed by a postman in the semi-final. <laughs> so they did not deliver that day. We're looking for the viewers to get their comments in. Vernie, Patrick Hickey says, Golden Pal, our Breeders' Cup, a banker. Yeah, the only, a Breeders' Cup is the most competitive race in the world. So I think it's hard to say that any, anything's a banker. Um, probably short enough price considering, and as I said, the, the best quality uh, race in the world, even though my, my lock of the week is in the Breeders' Cup, but I've been maybe a bit more conservative than that, and I'll reveal all a bit later. But it is very, very competitive. So the other thing as well with, with the horses as well, as we were just talking about this before, if the price is big enough, you can lock them to place as long as it kind of is, you know, doubling your money or something or trebling or whatever, but, you know, lock someone into place, which is handy for when Cheltenham and the big ones come around, you could be placing eight lads like. Mm. Bernie, what was that horse racing one that you're, you're thinking will come in this weekend? Uh, mine is in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. That's tomorrow night at Del Mar. Del Mar is in California. Uh, I was Michael there. Ca yeah, where are you? I was there. Well, I was in the village overlooking where the where the surf meets the turf. It's a spectacular place. Funny you should say that because uh, the jockey David Egan, who's originally from Kildare, is getting surfing lessons at the moment from another from another jockey. And there's a great picture of him on Twitter. He's got obviously got good balance on a horse, but he's got equally good balance on a surfboard. Um, my bet there is uh, Twilight Jet, trained by Michael O'Callaghan, had ten runs already as a juvenile. One last time out. Uh, in a group three at Newmarket has since been bought by a high profile 50% of his stake has been bought by a high profile US owner by the name of Mike Averone who had 50% of the legendary horse Big Brown uh, Michael O'Callaghan has gone over 10 days it went over 10 days before the race to prepare and get everything in order as did the jockey Lee Roach this horse has serious speed this is over uh, five furlongs so this is blinking you miss it it'll be over probably in just under a minute I'd say uh, and my bet is for Twilight Jet to place. So that should be in around two to one to place. And it's the top get, three to place. Get that gif up on the screen then. Is that your lock for the week? That's, That's my pick. lock of the week. Oh, oh, no, get no, it no, in. No, no. That's his lock of the week, baby. Lock it in, baby. <laughs> That's what um, I'm talking about. I, look, I know what my lock of the week is. But first off, Man City minus one. So obviously we can't pick them on a no handicap to win here because they're... Heavy. Well, like four to six isn't ridiculously tight odds no, here. No, that's, that's but, okay for a soccer game and particularly one that you're involved in. Yeah, but, but we have kind of set out that you can't, uh, that as long as the handicap is, you can pick a team to win so long as the handicap is one goal. If the handicap is more than one goal, you must pick them to cover the spread. So actually City do count here. So four to six, Man City to win away. But then again, after the 5 nil hammering at home last week and then getting a draw against Atalanta during the week. Like, I don't know, surely United are going to be fired up for this one. Well, see, United bet Spurs last week, 3-0, and put an end oh, sorry, to the week before Nuno. Then, yeah, mm. put, uh, put an end to poor old Nuno. So, and the thing is, well, right, as Christy Ring said about Jimmy Barry Murphy, you cannot legislate for genius, right? Ronaldo, he, he strolled around the park, strolled around the park, ball comes out, bang, it's a goal, right? And City recently are struggling for goals. So... I like United plus one. Not me locking so, or anything, like, but I like that if you're going to, because they're technically the underdog and all they'd have to do is draw. So you're telling me the Man City team that scored four goals last night against Bruges is struggling for goals? Yeah, but they're not playing against Bruges this weekend. Get not easy against uh, Bruges. Not easy against Crystal Palace either. <laughs> but like Ronaldo might be popping up with the goals, but sure, like he's costing his team so much every game by being a traffic cone up front. I sure I know, but you're looking except this traffic going can score. I'm no United fan, by the way, actually, <laughs> nor Ronaldo, but you cannot argue with the, the, the just so I saw somebody writing a deadly piece there saying that like this is the price you pay when you have Ronaldo. His uh his play is what puts you in trouble, but then his genius is what gets you back out of it. Uh yeah, it, it like you know, it, it's just a funny it's kind of what you get when you sign Ronaldo now, like at this stage. At thirty six okay. years of age. Yeah, I'm not saying he can't kick soccer now, but he's costing his team too. Uh, is it, like you were going to go with, um, in the NFL, you were going to go for your Green Bay Packers to beat Kansas City Chiefs. The Chiefs, people probably know Patrick Mahomes, absolute genius, but they've been struggling this year. Is there any other bet in the NFL that you, you'd go, you'd be kind of saying, let's lock that in now that 
obviously the Packers one is out of the equation to you. Um, do you know what I was actually looking at too was the spread between the Jets and the uh, the Jets and the Colts, right? It's ten and a half, which you know the For Jets who? are coming. But it's, it's so sorry. The Colts are favoured at minus ten and a half, so then the Jets are plus ten and a half. I actually, I just think that's too high, right? The Colts aren't that good, and the Jets are pretty poor. But Mike White was unreal last weekend there in his first game. You know, his, his game ball and his jersey is in the Hall of Fame now because the, he set records for a first ever start in the NFL. So I like. The, I like the Jets in the underdog handicap there. I really, really do. Uh, ten and a half. It's a lot to cover in an NFL game. Ten and a half. You'd, you'd want to be like the Jets. The Jets are coming off a big win last weekend as well, though. And the Colts are coming off a heartbreaking loss in a divisional game against the Titans. I like the Jets to cover that ten and a half. Mm. To be honest. Yeah. Look, I, I'm not the entirely one. against you there. Yeah, I haven't a Scooby Doo about NFL. I'm not even going to pretend that I do. But I hear there's good betting opportunities if you know what you're, oh, if you if you follow yeah. them week on week. Yeah, yeah but the, the the spread is so like obviously you know how often the bookies are right, but the spread makes it almost impossible every time. Yeah, that's why the ten and a half is nice there because if they get bet by ten, it still covers. Yeah, know what you mean. Oh, and that's okay, I'm, I'm going to pick my lock of the week. Let's I'm go. Gonna go. It's Bally Hale, baby. It just oh. has to be Bally Hale. Shane looking to get off to a 1-0 record. 1-0 start. He goes for the... Not easy one, but yeah. Just a straight-up win. Yeah, straight-up win. Why would, I, why would I dare put my neck on the block for the handicap when I don't need to? Yeah. What yeah. price are Bally Hale straight-up win? 2-7. 7-2 seven. Seven to two on, sorry, yeah. Ah, Janie Max. So you're telling me, Shane, if you had a fiver this weekend, you'd put the fi- <laughs> you'd put the fiver on to win what two euro forty back? Yeah. Ah, Janie well, Mac. To get a one and zero record in this, uh, I thought we were trying to make people money here. We yeah. still have to. We still have to come up with what is our uh, what is our for what happens if you win? What happens if you come bottom? It is now uh, yeah, well, the proverbial wooden spoon. We'll what about the Giants to beat the Raiders? Who lost rogues during the week, thirteen to ten? Yeah, that for a straight up win, that's a huge price. The only thing about that is the Raiders are after going through already a lot of controversy with the John Gruden thing, and they turned around and won. So losing a player earlier in the week, I know it's like horrible circumstances and all that. But like, the, the, look, the Raiders are pretty good. Rogues was only a rookie, uh, a good rookie at that. But I, I still think Derek Carr, you know, like Derek Carr will still control it. The defense is still there. The coach is still there. Uh, it would. You know, as cold and as harsh as it sounds, it would almost be like if a fellow was injured and you couldn't have him. Uh, if it, 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 no one knew, like the, the horrible story, Henry Rogues was, yeah, look, sorry, yeah, a polite way to put it is right. He is in trouble for drink driving and killing a woman in a car crash, was driving 156 miles an hour or something, was twice the legal limit. So he's out and will probably more than likely be out for good and going for his. Yeah, That's they the dropped man. him from his contract straight away. Yeah, straight immediately. Yeah, so, uh, but this is the thing: they cut the, it's, the NFL is so cutthroat, cut, so cold. This next man up mantra that they always have, and as the Raiders have always said, Al Davis, the the legendary owner that they had, just win, baby. That's it. Just win, baby. Nothing else. That's I see. Uh, it was very four to seven. So I don't know if that would put them in against Shin Rohn, who and you're tipping them from the hurling show, uh, Bernie. Four to seven for Cool Derry. There's no uh, points handicap up, but I'd say if two to seven Bally Hale is going to count, four to seven Cool Derry would too. Uh, four to seven Cool Derry is value, to be fair. Uh, it's been played in Borough, which is probably a bit tighter than Tullamore. Shinron have not beaten Cool Derry in living memory for me, anyway. So I think um, I think that's a great bet, I have to say. Also, like Sir Kieran at four to 11 to beat Trump Cullen in the relegation final as well. I think if you double the two of them up, you'd have a lovely bet. Yeah, so are we going well, to accept the Bally Hale two to seven, or are the odds too tight on that? No, I think no, the I, I don't know. Like, so you telling me if Twilight Jet places, I uh, uh, Twilight Jet places, I get one point uh, at two to one, and if Shane tips a two to seven shot and and they win, he also gets a point. See, it falls within the remit that we set out. Uh, we set it out before we actually saw that the handicap spread for Bally Hale. I still I just. I don't know how it's for, but anyway, yeah, it falls within the remit, so that's it. This is what we signed up to, and you chose yours, Shane chose his. Get the lock gift ready, because I am choosing now as well, right? 
There's only one Samson in the Bible, but Shinron have two, right? They've already been beaten by Kulderi twice in the year. Local derby, shut down Brian Carroll, right? If Shane Stapleton can do it, anybody can do it. So Shinron, surely to God, have somebody that's going to shut him down. Now, you cannot be beaten by the same team three years in, or three times in one, in one year. Good friend of mine, Trevor Fletcher, managing Shinron. I'm going to back him. I'm locking him up. That's my lock. That is it. I told you, I was going to hang the onions. There you go. They're hanging. Well, in fairness, Dave, at least you, at least you put your neck on the block. They're, they're, odd, they're odds against. I'm going odds against as well. The other, the other fella here has picked the most obvious bet of the weekend, which is absolutely zero value. Okay, I go from to beat the spread. I go from to cover the spread. So now we're enough. talking. Now we're talking. Yeah, minus four. All right, we, oh. might, we might update the rules a little bit. Maybe we didn't get this perfectly. We'll go Ballyhale minus four. So are we accepting that everything has to beat the spread? From now on, if you're picking a hurling, camogie, uh, soccer, whatever, it has to be to beat the spread. Yeah, I, I'm happy with that. It has to be either like five to six even money. I think it has to be around that. So, like, you know, and a bit of value for a bit of value for the punters, you know? <laughs> find the cowboy up. Find the cowboy up. So I love your JR Jim Ross hat as well, by the way. Good old JR. Thanks, yes, old man. <laughs> So what we'll do is we'll wait for the comments to come in until tomorrow morning and then we're going to uh, put a poll up for the rest of Friday and Saturday morning up until about probably half 11. So people will see it on the Twitter or at our game HQ. Vote on that. And then next week we'll do round two. Hopefully we'll all have a one and all record. Yeah, we'll also have a forfeit. Um, we'll each maybe come up with a forfeit ourselves and then we'll agree on something live on the show next week. How's that? Sounds good to me. Yeah, but at, for the end, yeah, for the end of the season, it's the yeah. end. No, it's not. It's not week to week. Yeah, yeah, grand, grand, yeah. grand. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> come on now. No, I just wanted to start with a bang and go on with Shin Road. Come on, hell, lads. I'll be no down there. No time you won't get into I'll a county final. I'll be down in Brendan's Park Saturday, Nisha. So I'll take a picture of the scoreboard after and send it on to you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>